everybody. Welcome back to the shop for another installment of Dubro 101. Today I'm getting ready for another build and uh, part of my annual stock up for doing builds during the winter is to include some push rods and other hardware, including laser rods. Laser rods are a great, great addition to your shop to have on hand because you're always going to need them to control surfaces on your radio controlled models. These are great for boats, airplanes, and cars, so it's great to have them on stock for whatever project you're about to do. Part of keeping these in stock in my shop is including to have both lengths available. We have 36 inch length as well as 48 inch length for the larger models. It's good to have them both on hand because you never know whether or not 36 is going to be long enough. Laser rods are great because you can use them with the inner and outer tubes to accomplish a, a multitude of complex pathways. So the, the tubes are, are flexible themselves, but they also include hardware that allows you to create stiff points uh, as well as non-stiff points. Uh, but for example, when you go out of a fuselage into a control surface for like an elevator or a rudder, you're going to want to have a little bit of extra stiffness there so that you don't have flex and some flutter if you're in a high speed, uh, high dive, for example, <laughs> maneuver, uh, you can have some flutter and then you, you have trouble controlling your model. So we're going to get the parts out on the table and I'll show you how to install them together. All right, with our rods out of the package, I like to put my sleeves with my rods together so that I don't lose them. Uh, your call, but that's just me. It also helps keep the inner rod uh, clean for when we need to use it later. I just want to show you guys that uh, it's, it's pretty cool how these are designed. If you take the rod out and you look inside, there are some ridges on the inside of the sleeve, and that's to help reduce rubbing friction between the sleeve and the rod. Pretty clever idea. Now what's great about these sleeves also is that they can be easily trimmed. It's soft enough plastic that you can trim it with a hobby knife. So as you install it into a fuselage and it sticks out, you're gonna want to have it stick out a little bit so that you can trim it flush. You don't necessarily wanna have it like this. Make sure that you oversize it just a little bit because it will make your life a little bit easier. After you trim it, you don't have to trim it completely flush. You can also sand these. Just as a brief demonstration, I'll use a sanding bar and you can see it sands really quite easily. There's a little bit of cleanup you'll have to do afterwards, but it does sand so that you can get it perfectly flush with your model. This particular plastic is, is really great also for once you install, you can rough up the surface at your exit point with some sandpaper. I'm using 120 grit sandpaper right here. I go roll it horizontally and then do some vertical as well just so that it's nice and scuffed up and this will help increase your physical bond just by increasing the surface area so once you apply some epoxy or some ca it will help to grab onto the sleeve as you glue it in place now use of the laser rods is really straightforward. You've got some included hardware, uh, lots of different application uh, suggestions, but you've also got a diagram on how to do your assembly. Now, just a couple of things to point out that you do have these plastic keepers that slide over top of your clevises. All right, so quick link clevises are awesome. And these slide over top so they don't pop apart and you lose control of your model. You also have the 256 nut that is a jam nut that goes up against the clevis and prevents the, the, the control rod or the clevis from turning while in flight so that everything stays the correct length. Moving on to this portion, you have the same kind of thing that I told you about earlier where you can use a termination of the uh, a threaded rod onto the rod itself or you can have the four inch threaded rod extension, which can be substituted uh, for a, stif a stiffener if you need it. Uh, that's usually done at one end or the other, wherever you may need it. I have had moments where I've had to use this stiffener on the servo end because there was some play and flex in the servo side and I didn't have any extra sleeve uh, available for that. 
What's also cool is that you can use different, uh, if you have really long runs, you can use sections uh, of unused threads to thread together the inner, the inner rod. So you can use a portion of the threaded portion in here to connect this to that. So you can make extensions of your in, inside rods as well. Can't really do that well with the, uh, with the sleeve, but if you have just two different formers that goes from one piece to the other that's pretty short, you shouldn't have any issues. I've done that before too. So let's open up the hardware and I'll show you what each of the pieces is specifically and we can go from there. So inside the package, you've got your threaded studs as well as your four inch extension threaded rod stiffeners. You've got your uh, quick links and some hex nuts for jam nuts on the quick links. And you've got your plastic keepers. When you go to assemble these, you wanna put your plastic keeper on first and then whichever the threaded stud or the rod that gets assembled or alternatively you can put the nut on first it really doesn't matter so when you go to connect this to a control surface or the servo if you're using one of these nuts you can just spin it up there and then using needle nose pliers torque it so that it's not going to go anywhere and then of course the keeper slides over top so that the spring steel does not come loose during flight or operation. Now a quick tip I'll give you for using the push rods along with the threaded studs is it's going to be kind of a pain to get them in there. I highly recommend you use a threaded stud driver from Dubro. Uh, it just simply threads straight on until it stops and then you just thread it into the plastic. And what this does is it allows you to get it into your push rod easily and quickly and doesn't gall the threads with like pliers or something. And so that you can just remove it and then put a clevis on really, really easily one of those moments where you know that there's got to be a better tool for the job simple as it is this is the better tool for the job okay so two final thoughts before we end here i just want to point out that we're we only have one 256 nut on this entire assembly the reason for that is you only need really one because once you lock the nut this entire control rod is not going to turn because of how it's connected to the servo or if you put the nut on this end how it's connected to the control horn so either end that you use probably should use the, the servo side i personally only use on the servo side because it gives better adjustability easier adjustability at the control horn point but that's that's the intended use so you really don't need 256 nuts at both ends. The other thought that I have is that if you have a problem with uh, some friction where you have some really tight bends, I highly recommend some dry film lubricant. It's Teflon. It's not going to be corrosive in any way. You can take off the feeder straw and spray some inside and it will help to lubricate and eliminate some additional friction if you have some really tight bends that you're trying to use these push rods on. It's a great tool to have in your workshop. All right, so I hope you learned something today. I hope you figured out how to use these for yourself. And if you come up with any additional tips, make sure you comment in the description below for this video. We're always trying to look for new ways to use our products and it's great to have people who share them with us. Until next time, you can make sure you find all of your other hardware needs at Dubro.com.